So over the past about a month or so, I've had a couple different lens reviews all by a company, Irix. Now you've already seen the title, you've seen the thumbnail, so you know what's coming. Today, we're going macro. So this is actually the first lens that they, or the first cine lens, I should say, that they ever produced. Obviously they have the 11 mil, 15, and 45, and the 150. The 15, is what you're currently seeing right now on my Pocket 4K. We got the 45 on here currently. So unless Irix wants to also send me the 11, I don't believe I will be reviewing that one. The 11's a little bit more of a specialty lens. Once you get that low, it, it has uh, more of that fisheye look that I personally wouldn't use. All right, so I don't know if this was a recent change or the original change. But for any uh, box nerds out there, this is the 15, 45, and then this is the 150. So how dare you not match your boxes? <laughs> now the nice thing about this video is it's probably gonna be a bit shorter and have a lot more uh, sample footage because this is going to share basically the same exact specs that the rest of the lineup have. As we've talked about before, um, they use magnetic lens hoods. It allows to use slip-on matte boxes, also uh, threaded filters. So handful of reviews are not a fan of the magnetic lens hood, but I love it. But if you're the type of person that usually picks up the lens by the lens hood, I would stop doing that. I'd stop doing that anyway, personally. All right, so my 45 actually has a uh, tilta this top little ring the last like couple millimeters there is actually for the matte box so it is a couple millimeters shorter but even then um, it's actually very similar in weight and size and they did that on purpose so that way if you have these on gimbals or any sort of setup and you have to do a lens swap uh, you're not going to have major shifts in weight which is extremely helpful now again, it's not just the weight that they keep very similar as well. You can see that the focus rings and the aperture rings are the exact same. So I just took the 45 off of my camera and as you can see, I have my follow focus right there. If I take the 150, I throw this guy on. I know that without having to shift this forward or backwards, I can literally go right back down and boom. Now it's on the uh, proper follow focus here. The 150 also shares the same water resistance uh, and weatherproofing. So it has the various different seals in it to prevent against that. And besides being a macro lens and of course the focal length, the biggest difference is the fact that this is a T3. Now being a macro lens, you have incredible amounts of shallow depth of field. So if this were to also be 1.5, uh, I have a feeling that literally like nothing would be in focus except for like a single hair if you ever got, went to that point. And so it'd be useless in low light if you're trying to film someone's face anyway, because nothing would be in focus. And yeah, that's it for all the boring specs. Again, if you've watched my other two videos on the 45 and the 15, you know that I've ran a lot into the specs. So now let's just get to some really cool uh, sample and test footage. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button because I will be doing a whole breakdown about how all these lenses fit together. Because if you're on doing short films, commercials, if you're on an actual set where you're using various different primes and focal lengths, it's very important that not only you shoot on similar cameras, if not the same camera, but that all your lenses match. And so I'm very curious to see how they all match in terms of color, skin tones, and everything else. Uh, so stay tuned for that. All right, cue the footage. All right, guys, let's take a look at some of this footage. Yeah, this thing gets crazy close, even when you think you're already close like this. Nope, not close enough, a little closer. There we go, we're talking the fibers of this shoe. It's ridiculous how much detail this thing has. Now, the only thing I don't like about this shot is you can see the terrible wobbleness of the Pocket 6K's rolling shutter, uh, but still, if you keep it steady enough or on a tripod, you can get some amazing detail shots. Now, keep in mind, this thing is all at like T11 to T22. Uh, there's no NDs on this thing.
This thing is razor sharp. And here you can see how far of a throw this thing is. I mean, it's 150, of course, on a Super 35 sensor. And you can almost see the atmospheric, like warm day, like kind of heat, whatever it's called. Now, this is a great example of how hard it is to track the focus on this lens. Um, because, you know, I've been a first AD. I consider myself pretty good at keeping uh, a focus on a subject. And you are moving your finger so slightly to change focus on this thing. You'll see in a second that even just finding what your subject is, like there, you're searching so much because it's so close. Uh, and here, take a look at this clip how much the focus is changing. Now in a second, you'll see how little my finger is moving on the focus wheel. It's ridiculous. That is from that exact clip. You barely touch this thing. And when you nail focus, it's razor sharp, but it is very easy to miss focus on this lens. So moving subjects, not recommended. But if you take the time to really practice and you nail that focus, and especially if it's a non-moving subject and you really like to do product photography or commercials or any sort of filmmaking, or you're just looking for kind of that specialty lens that really adds a whole new dimension. And the same way a fisheye effect adds a interesting look and style and dynamic for the ultra wide series of lenses, here you're gonna have just amazing amazing close-ups uh, that are razor sharp up to 8k who knows maybe even i would love to throw this on the new ursa 12k to see how that looks definitely stay tuned for the video where i compare the three lenses in the iric cine line set and thanks so much for watching guys and i'll see you in the next one